This is a microwave oven. It's like any other microwave you've seen. It's got a clock, it's got a start and stop button, and it even has one of those round glass plates that spins around real slow. But you know what the worst part of any microwave is? It's the timer. The 60 seconds that you have to wait for your Hot Pockets to heat up are the longest 60 seconds in your entire life, and that's a fact. On the other hand, I've put 60 hours into video games before and it felt like 60 seconds. I think the solution here is obvious. I'm gonna ditch the stupid timer, I'm gonna put a game console in my microwave so that it heats up food for as long as I can survive a game of Tetris. What could possibly go wrong? Uh. Oh, the screen just broke. Oh my god. Oh! The cheese didn't melt, and I think the cheese kind of was keeping the whole thing together. Oh! There might be a couple flaws with this. My name is Alan Pan, I'm an electrical engineer, and I build ridiculous contraptions on YouTube all the time. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. The challenge is going to be getting a retro game console communicating with a microwave oven. This is, of course, the venerable Ching Shi Fun for Family Friends Classic Empire Retro Portable Player, one of the most anticipated console releases for 2020. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Oh, okay, some nice classic 8-bit uh, title screen. The music actually turns off, and we get a menu here. There are apparently 182 games on this thing. It feels very light, very cheap. Oh, I've actually, it looks like the screen just broke just now. <laughs> so we want the microwave to only be on when I'm playing a game and to be off at all other times. So I need to figure out a way to tell when the game console is playing a game and when it's not. Now it sounds like it'd be pretty simple, but I feel like it might be trickier than I think it is. No matter what route I take, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to use one of these. This is a microcontroller. It's basically a tiny computer that's easily programmable. This is probably gonna be the brains of the operation. What I've noticed is when I'm playing a game on this game console, there's background music playing. But when I'm at the selection menu to pick a game, there's actually no music at all. I think that might be just good enough as an indicator of what state the console's in. So if I use the microcontroller to listen in on the sound that's being played, I can just disconnect that speaker. If I plug that right into the microcontroller, that should give us a rough idea when music is playing. Because that music is really just gonna be like a electrical waveform. The microcontroller is not gonna care if it's supposed to be music or if it's just a signal. So essentially we're just going to say that if there's music playing on this thing, we're playing a game. And if there's no music, then we're not playing a game. And that's just gonna directly control the microwave oven. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Boom, microwave. Let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. Something I want to point out is you should not be taking apart microwaves at home. And the way you know that is that this microwave has these special security screws. They're like star-shaped screws with kind of a peg in the middle. So even if you have like star drivers, those aren't even what will unlock these. This is a screwdriver that I found. It's got a special bit. It's not the bit that was designed to unscrew these safety screws, but it definitely is the one that we're using for the job. Here it is, the brains and the muscle. And you gotta be really careful not to touch any of this stuff yet because it's still, uh, there are parts that could be electrically active and they'll kill you pretty quick. They'll kill you pretty quick. This metal box here, this is the magnetron. This is the part of the microwave that actually generates the radio frequencies that heats up your food. It does contain a ceramic called beryllium oxide, which uh, if we dropped it or cracked it or broke it, could generate a dust that uh, could kill us. And this transformer down here, which is this big block of metal, is what converts the voltage from our wall outlets into the high voltage required for the magnetron. And it does that in conjunction with this part here called a capacitor. And a capacitor stores electrical energy. And since we've used this microwave already, there's a decent chance that this capacitor still could be charged. And if you touch that wrong, that can also kill you. If this capacitor is functioning correctly, then it should have actually discharged itself over time. Then we can go ahead and not have to touch everything here with a plastic action figure. <laughs> to be extra safe, we need to check the voltage on this capacitor first with what's called a multimeter. A multimeter can measure a lot of things. One of the things it can measure is the voltage of a power source. So we've got a AA battery here and reading 1.6 volts, which is normal for a new battery. If this capacitor is fully charged, we could read like 4,000 volts and what we're really hoping for right now is that I see zero. Look at that! 
It's perfectly zero volt. This capacitor is doing its job. It's discharged itself, and it means that we are safe to go ahead and touch stuff. Touch, 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 touch. So the microwave is open. We need to figure out how to connect our game console to the microwave via a microcontroller. In this part of the microwave, it's on the other side of the panel that's got the clock and the start button and all that stuff. This is where the brains of the microwave are. There's a chip here, and I'm uh, betting that that's a microcontroller that's got all the programming for the brains of this thing. What I'm interested in are these two black boxes here and here. These look like relays to me. And relays are electromechanical switches, so these relays are turning something on and off. And if we look at these wires that are coming off the relays and where they lead to, we got wires going to the lamp, the light in the microwave. We got wires going to the fan, the part of the microwave that cools the magnetron. And we got wires coming from these relays down to the input of this transformer. I don't know if you can see all the way down there, there's even wires going to the motor that turns the glass table thingy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that relay with a metal shim, and we're just gonna shove it in there so it just acts like a wire, so it'll be a closed circuit the entire time. Instead of a relay switching those connections on or off, these are now permanently on. Pro tip, you never wanna run a microwave without something inside to heat. Oh, I didn't put the glass plate in there. <laughs> Is that? Oh, it's gotta find a, it's got a seat correctly. Where's the thing? Oh my God. Here's a pro tip. You never wanna run a microwave without something inside to heat because otherwise all of that radio energy is just gonna bounce right back into the magnetron and fry your microwave. Trust me, I've known people who've done it, setting their microwaves to use as a timer without anything inside. Don't do that. Just put a glass of water in there. I've got a power strip here. It's got an on and off button. So I'm gonna plug in the microwave and nothing should happen. Okay, so theoretically, as soon as I hit this switch, the microwave should start microwaving without me having to touch any of the buttons or put in any time or anything. If my theory is wrong, uh, we might see some fireworks. So let's see, three, two, one. Hey! It's microwaving! I can turn it off, and it's off. Turn it on, and it's on. Off, on, off. <laughs> that might not be good for it. We'll go ahead and leave that off. We can now control this entire device with one simple input-output. And if we use an Arduino to control our own relay that's connected to the power supply that goes into the microwave, then we have a really easy way of controlling this thing. So now all we have to do is figure out how to get the Arduino to listen to the game console. This is where the power comes into the microwave from the wall. We got a white wire, we got a black wire. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this black wire and we're going to attach a relay here, which we know is an electromechanical switch. This can be controlled with a microcontroller and that's how we're gonna turn the microwave on and off. So now we just need to put on three lead wires. There we go. This is gonna go out to the Arduino, and that'll control the relay, and that'll control the microwave. Bob's your uncle. Now I just gotta drill a hole on the side of this microwave. Ah, perfect, missed all of the vital organs. I don't know why everything I make ends up looking like a bomb. <laughs> Not that I would ever make a bomb, but if I did, I would just make the wires all the same color. Here's a pro tip, if you're gonna be sending wires out of a hole of like a container or uh, some kind of packaging for your product. One easy thing to do is just tie a nice little knot. All that tension gets stopped here and it doesn't go into uh, unplugging our wires. Nice and secure. We don't actually need to have any of this stuff anymore because we're gonna make a gaming microwave. So we can just go ahead and put the hardware directly on top of the buttons and display that we would normally use. We got double-sided foam mounting tape. For certain projects, you can really get away with using this to put like 90% of your stuff together. Breadboard comes with its own double-sided mount on the back because they know you're just gonna be slapping this on something. Yeah, look at that, that's secure. We've got our relay connected to the wall voltage. We've got our Arduino here, and that's connected to the relay. And we've got this tablet connected to the Arduino. I'm gonna go ahead and test it. So I'm gonna tell our Arduino to turn the relay on. <laughs> oh, wait, I need to actually stop this because there's no cup of water in there. 
pro tip. I literally just did a pro tip about this. How did oh I? God. Doesn't matter. We now have total digital control over this microwave. So theoretically, anything that acts as an input to the microcontroller could be used to turn this on or off. I mean, it could be a tweet, it could be the stock market, anything. We can do terrible things to this microwave now. Now we just need to have this thing somehow communicate to this thing. It looks like based off of the cable they provided, we've got a video out and an audio out. And we'll be able to plug the audio part of this into our microcontroller and tell when music is playing. <laughs> so the first thing I tried to do, once you know it, the screen broke. <laughs> very light, very cheap. Oh, it looks like the screen just broke just now. So I figured, you know what? Don't need the screen because we'll have this monitor here. And we can put this on the microwave and we don't even have to worry about that. But then I was trying to grab the audio from the RCA audio here. And it turns out that this piece of crap doesn't have clean sound. So what happens is there's like this crazy, it's almost like a 60 hertz hum. There's just electrical noise up the wahoo coming out this wire. And so the microcontroller can't tell the difference between that and just sound. I tried to make like a bandpass filter and you know what? It's been a long time since I've been in college. I haven't done that kind of math and electrical engineering in a while. So we don't actually need any of this. We don't need any of that, none of it. Uh, because we've got something much, much better. And I guess I'll show it to you now. <laughs> After seeing how fragile our first game console was, there wasn't a chance in heck I was gonna risk breaking our second one. So I just glued the thing wholesale to our microwave. The least invasive way of telling when a game is playing is to just glue a microphone to the speaker hole. So that's what I did. The microphone talks to the microcontroller and I wrote some programming. Do you wanna see the code? I guess I could show you the code, only if you promise to look at it. There's a smoothing function so that it doesn't uh, accidentally discharge a microwave so it's not too sad. But that doesn't matter right now. What matters is I've been filming and I've been building and I have worked up an appetite and I want Hot Pockets. Hey! <laughs> oh. <laughs> For one of these two minutes, two minutes? That's an eternity, but not if we're playing a video game. The sleeve makes sure it cooks evenly. Godspeed, little Hot Pocket. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn on our game controller. Zero handicap. Come on, I'm not a baby. Oh, geez, that's actually really fast. Boom! Oh, yes, this is working! We're doing it! Oh, no! I'm messing up now. I've made massive holes. So the game's over now. That means our microwave is done microwaving. That was about two minutes, don't you think? Let's see. Oh! That's warm! Oh no, wait. Oh, the middle's frozen. Oh, oh. it's solid in the middle. Oh God, cause it's got meatballs. <laughs> in theory, I just need to be able to play longer. I just need to be a better gamer and then I'll be able to have better gamer food. Now I know what some of you are thinking. It's not safe to be playing video games in front of a microwave door for minutes on end. All right. Let's see how this works. This microwave door has a screen on the front and it's a mesh. The diameter of those holes determine what radio frequencies can pass through them. That means the microwaves cannot actually get past the screen even though it is full of holes. So it should be perfectly fine to spend a couple of minutes sitting in front of this microwave and uh, playing our lives away. Now popcorn is kind of interesting because it has like recommendations for how long you're supposed to microwave it for, but it also says to like listen for pops more than anything. So this is sort of like the ideal gamer food for a gamer microwave, because the time doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go a little bit easier on myself now. I'm gonna choose the lowest difficulty setting and that'll give us a chance to actually cook this stuff, hopefully. All right, and we're starting. Here we go. Oh, look at this. This is block game for babies. Oh, oh, yes, I just got it. Oh, easy is so much easier than hard. So we are like peak, peak popcorn right now. And this is normally when dumb suckers would be looking at the timer and pacing back and forth and wondering if it was gonna be done. And here we are enjoying a nice game of falling block game. I could do this all day. It smells a little smoky, I guess, now that I think about it. How long has the popcorn been in there? I need to lose this game of Tetris really quick. Game's over. Let's, uh, oh, that's not a good sign. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh god! <laughs> it's stuck together! It's one solid- I've never seen this before. So, pros of our microwave, it, it certainly does make you lose track of time. It's very, very hard to tell 
how long you're microwaving things for, which was the point. The cons are that it turns out you actually do need to know how much time you're spending microwaving food. One Easter egg in uh, our gamer microwave here, because it's a microphone, theoretically it'll pick up any loud sound and I should be able to do this. Ah! <laughs> well, that was Gamer Microwave. It kind of worked. I did it so that you don't have to. Seriously, don't try that at home. Don't open your microwave at home. I'll see you next time, gamers. Mmm. Oh, still frozen. And you can cut right there.